I'm struggling to comprehend the pace at which the dystopian objectives of unelected institutions are turning into a reality that will enslave us all. It's as if they've all been on a jolly to China and been handed the President Z playbook on effective monitoring and control of a large population. But if I correctly understand what is now being proposed, it goes one step beyond totalitarian command of a single nation. The proposal is for global control because the technology is there to make it happen and elected national governments seem to be buying into a globalist manifesto for which no one has voted. It's a challenge not to get emotional given the scale of betrayal that I feel, but let me set out a series of separate announcements from supposedly independent bodies, and you can make your own mind up about whether the long established Rowan paranoia is getting the better of me. Let me start by reminding you of a quote from Mayor Rothschild in the early 19th century, whose time has perhaps come. He said, Give me control of a nation's money supply, and I care not who makes its laws. I'm sorry, Mayor, you're being far too parochial in your thinking. The IMF wants control of the world's money supply, and as a completely unelected NGO, it certainly doesn't care who makes our laws or anyone else's. Let me remind you of why anyone with half a brain recognizes that CBDCs represent a one-way ticket to digital slavery. Once money becomes programmable, it's very easy to freeze it or seize it. The amount you hold can be limited. Tax can be taken automatically without your authority. Fines for expressing views outside of the group think can again be taken automatically. What you buy can be controlled. Money can be given an expiry date, so any bribes to nudge you into the desired behavior can be given a countdown until you either use it or lose it. How much you spend can be controlled and where you spend it can be controlled. Politicians are drunk with power since banana syndrome and realize what a weak, frightened, compliant citizenry they have. Unelected elites from the WEF to the UN to the WHO see this as their moment to grab power and impose their version of authoritarian Marxism for the common good and inevitably for the sake of climate control. The arrogance and hubris of these people reached its zenith in the Irish Parliament a couple of weeks ago when a Green Party MP said that in order to preserve free speech, it will be necessary to place limits on what we can say. If we have to listen to such bollocks, is it better that it comes from an elected representative rather than a non-government organization? Actually, that acronym needs to be updated. It seems to me that all NGOs are turning into GGOs, global government organizations, riding roughshod over democratic process to implement the same one world approach that they peddled during banana syndrome. With the honorable exception of Sweden, which proved that just as in the world of investing, going against the crowd can get you a much better outcome. At a recent conference of the World Bank and the IMF in Morocco, by the way, why are these shindigs never held in Stoke-on-Trent? Kristalina Georgieva, the IMF managing director said, if countries develop CBDCs only for domestic deployment, we are underutilizing their capacity. For this reason, the IMF is working on the concept of a global CBDC platform. Perhaps in a reference to the way the BRICS countries have responded to the weaponization of the US dollar, she went on to say that we are working on a principle of interoperability with a shared infrastructure that would avoid the emergence of settlement blocks, which is the last thing we want, and to avoid further economic fragmentation. 
She also said that a failure to impose a centralized CBDC platform would lead to increased use of those nasty decentralized cryptocurrencies. Hallelujah. That's exactly what any freedom loving citizen should aspire to. Here at Beaufort, we refer to gold and Bitcoin as private money. Funds that are not issued by a central bank and cannot be debased or inflated away. If you live in the UK at the moment, you are being deliberately impoverished in two ways. The freezing of tax allowances until 2028 has been independently acknowledged as the biggest stealth tax raid in 40 years. Meanwhile, the money you save to try and pay these taxes is losing value at anything between the official government figure of 10% and the more realistic estimate of 15 to 20% a year. In a nutshell, the middle class is being destroyed. I had a planning session with one of our members the other day. He earns around £200,000 a year as an employee, so his effective tax rate is now 60%. He spent years building a seven-figure buy-to-let portfolio, but as, as a result of all the new regulations, the loss of tax reliefs and myriad interest rate hikes, his net yield from the portfolio is a paltry 1.7%. Little one day, he's now looking to sell his property portfolio, further exacerbating the crisis in the rental market, and is seriously looking at his options to move overseas. This guy is one of the brightest and best in his profession, and most countries would roll out the red carpet for him. Britain is clearly more interested in letting in illegal, unqualified immigrants to add to the benefits bill, rather than hanging on to the wealth creators whose onerous tax payments fund their unsustainable pet projects. I digress. Coming back to the subject of CBDCs, 114 central banks are experimenting with them, and 10 have implemented them, including Jamaica. Mind you, I did come across an article in the Jamaican press saying that the government was having to bribe its citizens to start using the digital currency, just like China did. Mind you, in the People's Republic, it only took the equivalent of 20 quid to get the great unwashed to sell their soul to the devil. There was a petition to prevent programmable money in the UK, but maybe it's a sign of the indifference of the mediocre majority. It only received 30,000 signatures, nowhere near the 100,000 needed to get a government response. The GGO scope creep extends to the World Health Organization. I've previously talked about their plans to expand their own power to declare global and regional banana syndromes, which seems thankfully to be meeting some much needed resistance from the governments whose elected power they would like to overrule. But they're also touting adoption of the EU medicine passport, which was supposed to be dismantled after banana syndrome. You'd better find a country where you're happy to live for the rest of your life soon, because I guarantee these passports are not being created to give you more freedom of movement. You may have noticed that France has now declared internal air travel illegal if there's an alternative route by train. This is surely a far more important reason for Paris to be in flames than adding two years to the pension age. This copycat approach even extends to the United Nations, which has announced that it would like to copy the World Economic Forum's proposal for a digital ID linked to your bank account. They've issued three new policy briefs ahead of their Vision for the Future Summit in September 2024, where they intend to reveal their plan for an international financial architecture. They claim that this digital ID harmonizes with their sustainable development goals for 2030. Uh, how exactly? Klaus Schwab and his lieutenants are not resting on their laurels either. They are working with a Swedish firm on a biometric ID that's embedded under your skin, which they somehow claim will help social inclusion. 
Meanwhile, Barack Obama goes public demanding a digital fingerprint before we can access the internet in order to combat misinformation. In Her Majesty's Treasury report on the proposed digital pound, they claim that the digital pound would be designed to support the government and bank's commitment to mitigate climate change. What the hell has a digital currency got to do with climate change or social inclusion? But you can see how the playbook works, can't you? First, you find a big social goal that no sane person could stand against, like climate change, sustainability, social inclusion, and so on. Then you define authoritarian policies, procedures, and technologies that give you all the power you want to monitor and control us plebs. Then you create a tenuous link between the good cause and the nasty ways in which you want to control our lives. You coordinate a global PR campaign with your elite chums in the unelected GGOs and the compliant governments where the ministers are all graduates of the World Economic Forum Young Champions Program. And hey presto, by the end of this decade, a cultural and political transformation from free market capitalism to authoritarian Marxism will be achieved without a shot being fired. Simples, as those furry creatures advertising comparison sites might say. My guess is that we, the silent majority of sane people who remember the freedoms our parents and grandparents fought and died for, have around 18 to 24 months to make enough noise to start turning this juggernaut around. The question is, who or what is going to lead the charge? For a detailed explanation of how this global CBDC will work, watch this outstanding video by the world's greatest financial plumber, George Gammon. The link is in the description under this video. I'll see you next time.